Earlier this year, Salomoni introduced a new direct note access technology, followed by a huge echo in the public. Now we visited Melodyne inventor Peter Neubecker in his laboratory to get some insight to the development of this groundbreaking technology. I've been thinking about how to best make use of polyphonic audio material for quite some time. But my thoughts were more like some kind of general pondering about algorithms, about listening really closely to what's inside the material and about ways to translate this. Uh, the first impulse to actually become concrete was provided by a Melodyne user. This guy from L.A. who had already been a longtime Melodyne user at this time did a production using a marimba phone. This instrument was rented for the session, and when they realized that there had been one note written wrong in the score, the instrument had already left the studio, so they had no chance to record it over. And yeah, that's how it is with a marimba phone. There's a lot of decay, and the notes blend into each other. Let's just play this for you. You see, it was a pretty short phrase, which was good luck for experimenting with it. Now the question is how to get inside of this phrase. With monophonic material, this is easy. The signal is periodic, allowing you to read a pitch at every point in time. Now when you have polyphonic material, you need to transform this, like in this typical view of a spectrogram. Here you might already anticipate what's inside the sound, as you can see single notes here, some being higher, others being low. Let me play it again. Okay, there is a kind of progression, but the fundamental tones down here are all really close to each other, whereas the harmonics are a bit easier to see, although they still blend and mix. You can't really judge what belongs to each other. Well, my first attempt to get in there in order to find dedicated notes was to do it just the other way around than you normally would. I simply listened and measured it. Let's say this tone here is um, A110 hertz, and it starts at 1.35 seconds and sustains until 3.5 seconds, or whatever. Well, I wrote these values directly into the program, so the program already knew what it was supposed to look for. Then I started to calculate and diversify pitches in order to find out which spectral parts belong to which fundamental tones. And this turned out to work much better than I expected. I had never tried this before. I've been only thinking about it in theory. And this was the result of this first approach. Which of course sounds exactly the same as the original. The only difference is that you can grab every note individually now, and you can move it up and down, changing its pitch at will. So I did send this to the Melodyne user. I gave him separate sound files, laid them out in a Melodyne arrangement, and he was really happy with it, surprisingly thinking this was a pretty normal thing. Yeah, and so this was the first step in really getting a clue as to this form of note separation. Later on, I made the next step, which normally would have been the first one, to let the program find the notes on its own and to separate them content-wise before separating them sound-wise. Okay, let's see how this works practically. What can you do with the polyphonic detection, and what kind of results do you get from it? See, this is a normal sound file being shown in a pretty usual style. Let's listen to it. And so on. So this is a Spanish guitar played live. And what you could already do with Melodyne before was to slowly ride through the sound, listening precisely to what's going on. As you can hear, you have to deal with chords here, which are blending into each other. 
But if you wanted to know what is exactly going on at this point, what is happening inside the chord, you would need to spread it up, to look inside just like viewing a piano roll or any other kind of abstract notation or so. And this is exactly what happens when you decide to separate the notes. Now a detection process starts, and when it's done, you have this result. Every note can be seen at exactly the place where it was played. Let's play it once again. You see, every note is actually there. Each of these things we call blobs stands for a note, and I can grab it and move it. Or I could turn its volume up or down. I'll just let this passage play for a while. And change the pitch. In this way, I can totally redesign the melody. Or I can retune the whole thing by using special macro functions. Here the system analyzed the harmony of this passage as being A minor. Let's take a longer passage, and while it plays, we switch, on the fly, to another key. Major. Spanish scale. And so on. Now, since this part has been analyzed, the sound of every note can be extracted, and I can freely manipulate any single note inside. Some years ago, I was asked if it could be possible to separate notes out of a chord once the computing power was strong enough. At that time, I was already convinced that this is no matter of pure computing speed. I mean, you would have been happy if you managed to extract notes out of a chord, even if this took the whole day. But in developing a software like this, the interaction with a fast computer turns out to be of great importance. You know, it's not much fun to develop something when you have to wait half the day before you can check your results and see if your code works in real life. From this point of view, computing power was indeed crucial for direct node access. It helped to have more fun in developing this technology. But the usage of DNA isn't really influenced by computing power. The analysis is faster than real time and the playback is fast anyway. So for musical usage of DNA, the computing power isn't such a big issue. <laughs> 